difficult to watch it, but it tells us so much about our own psyche. It tells us what happens when we shut off that intuitive voice inside of us because this series does a really good job because initially almost everybody was hesitant to swallow this magical pill that was promising you the whole world like too good to be true and usually when it's too good to be true it's not true Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Soulful Intuitive. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. I decided that from this episode onwards, we are not necessarily only going to talk about um, self-development topics per se, because we've been talking about it for a while, and I also feel like uh, we, if we don't integrate it in our lives and don't bring it in situations and scenarios that are applicable, then they're just concepts and they're not necessarily going to work for us because even when you do psychedelics or self-development courses, it's the uh, quality of what you learn and also the quantity of what you learn and the concept, but then they want you to integrate them because that's the whole point of engaging in any of these endeavors because you want to live a better life. You want to be a better person for yourself, for your family and friends, and for the society you live in. And overall, if everybody does that, then we will have a better society. So last time we talked about Andrew Tate, who is a controversial figure, and either hate it or love and it's not necessarily someone that I have followed or I have felt a lot of commonality with and that's exactly why I dedicated a few hours just watching one of his interviews his most recent interviews and I learned a lot I learned a lot uh, about myself and I learned a lot about him and the, the way that people like Andrew Tate look at the world, understand the world, perceive the world. And um, that was very helpful. And that's what made me want to talk about him because I know that most of us are only watching you know, TV shows that we like and uh, listening to people who think like us, surrounding ourselves with people who act like us, read the same things we read, watch the same things they watch, uh, which is great because it's safe, but safety doesn't necessarily mean growth. It doesn't lead to growth. When you're safe, sometimes, not all the times, you become stagnant and then you become tonda. And you only recognize the reflection of your face and you only like the sound of your voice. And we don't live in societies where everybody acts like us and walk like us and talk like us and think like us. It's just not useful. And as a gay man or any minorities, you don't have to be gay or lesbian or trans or any kind of minorities, we know that people outside of these circles are very different than us and we want them so badly to understand us and to accept us as we are so I just did the same thing I understood that most people aren't like me and so what am I going to do like I can't turn on the whole world just a big mirror of myself we live in a world where everyone's different and that's what diversity means and we don't have to be exactly like each other to love each other or to accept each other we just have to be able to understand each other and understanding doesn't come uh, from not talking not communicating it's not a result of canceling people blocking people 
uh, labeling people. It's just uh, it's not a way to a peaceful, harmonious society. So the next couple of episodes, we're going to talk about different topics, but still keep the main core of intuitive, soulful intuitive channel, which is going back into being more, more harmonious, listening to our intuitive voice, working on our intuition and overall how we can personally and collectively raise the vibration of our planet, because that's the most important thing. That's why we're here. That's why we have come to this planet. That's why we um, have family and friends around us because we have made a pact with them before incarnation that we are going to work with each other to better ourselves and better the world around us. Because, you know, planet Earth doesn't need us. We need planet Earth. So we didn't come here to help the planet Earth. Planet Earth is hosting us. So in this school of beautiful Earth, we can just graduate and go one level after another. And hopefully one day we will be a very high vibrating soul, which is a process. There is no rush. There is no shame in how far we have to go. But so that's just a little uh, footnote that I wanted to go through. Um, so we covered Andrew Tate great and hopefully what the whole reason behind talking about that was let's please not judge each other based on the the cover of the magazine or the face value or what we have heard from a friend of a friend of a friend or from someone on TV about like what this person or that person stands for and let's just do the hard work. And the whole work is to just investigate with an open heart, you know, just be curious. Like we have to be curious. And part of being curious is to go into topics knowing that we don't know anything. And just with, with no perception of we know it all, with no biases or... So just go in there really like wanting to learn, you know, kind of just like... I, I really like when uh, my straight friends ask me questions about gay culture because they really want to know. They just want to know uh, how it works and just uh, ups and downs and the backstory and uh, the culture itself and the interactions. And, you know, so that that's, that's why we have come such a long way is because we're all curious. You know, that's why men ask women about what it's like to be a woman and, you know, women do the same thing. So that's how we become united. So the past couple of days, I've been watching this TV show called Dope Sick, which is like a medical term for addicts and the symptoms that they experience when uh, they are consuming something that is highly addictive, like a, you know, toxins or the substances that are addictive, you know, it's, it's not a fun place to be. It's very painful. They have all kinds of physical pain and psychological pain and mental pain. So I started watching this show. It's about the emergence of a pharmaceutical material and pharmaceutical medication called Oxycontin. And by a pharmaceutical company called Purdue, which is owned by a private one family, a Sackler family, who are also very known around the world for donating mil millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to museums and other causes. So if you've been to major museums in Europe, there's always a wing that's called Sackler Wing, uh, which you only get your name on, you know, and such a, such a way above the wing of a museum uh, is when you do, donate a lot of money. So the, this TV show is about how this company started their magical appearance in the world of pharmaceuticals and how they made their billions um, with the drug called Valium which they, before they 
marketed this drug, they sort of came up with a title of this disorder, mental disorder, mental disease called psychic tension. So they created a disease first, and then they offered the solution. Problem, reaction, solution. So, and their solution was this drug, Valium, which they had researched, produced, and had it ready for uh, distribution. And that drug is no longer in circulation because it caused a lot of damage. It killed a lot of people, caused a lot of addiction. So, and that was a couple of decades ago. So then in 1999, if I remember it correctly from uh, the series, they came up with another medication called OxyContin. And they started this national, uh, nationwide campaign first about how important it is to combat pain and how bad pain is and how under treated pain is and and um with this like very you know just humanitarian approach to pain and how their goal is to just eradicate pain because nobody should feel pain and nobody should be under pain you know out of the goodness of their heart and so first they started that they also put together a lot of committees and institutions and they all had the word pain in it and then after that they colluded with the fda um, which is food and drug administration in the u.s and the head of fda who approved this drug which was a narcotic and highly addictive but that, and that's what happens when you're buddy buddy with the head of fda they um, put on top of this, the box of the, these pills that is less than 1% addictive. And the reason they put uh, for that was it's because it's slow releasing. So every 12 hours, it takes 12 hours for the drug to wear off. So you only take two a day and you don't get addicted to it. So, and that's, that's a very bold statement because the narcotics, unfortunately, is exactly like, let's say, alcohol. The first time you have alcohol, it you might have a shot or a drink and you're drunk. But if you continue using alcohol, then you're going to need a lot more in order to feel that level of intoxication. So that's why alcohol can be addictive and is addictive. Same thing applies to all the street drugs. Same thing, same thing is um, uh, true about opioids, which OxyContin is an opioid. So, but when they put that, the label says that it's less than 1% addictive. In the beginning, all the doctors who, you know, went to medical school, they know the nature of pharmacology and they know what opioids are and how they interact in, in our bodies. They all raise an eyebrow and they said, no, but... The power of propaganda and brainwashing and gaslighting and being one step ahead of the collective understanding, in this case, about this pill, they managed to muddy up the waters and make these smart nurses and doctors very confused about what they already knew about the nature of opioids and about the nature of narcotics and about the nature of painkillers. And the series does a really good job depicting the process of how people arrived and how this just got the life of its own and started rolling and surely, and but slowly but surely, it just got more and more momentum and then it hit the nation in, in the course of 10 to 20 years, killed millions. And uh, we don't even want to talk about how many families and lives it destroyed because it's a tragedy when people die 
through overdose. But it's even worse when they are suffering and they make everybody else around them suffer because of their disease, this addiction. And the show follows a, a, a doctor, follows patients, follows innocent people. They actually purposefully launch this dr drug in farming, logging, and mining communities because they had done the research and they knew that these hardworking people also have a lot of um, injuries. So they're not, um, they're, they're very familiar with pain. And of course, if they have severe pain, but because of the nature of the job, because of the socioeconomic level of those communities, they still have to get up and go to work. So of course, they're going to take a pain medication that is going to lower their pain so they can work harder and more for longer if the doctor told them that you're not going to get addicted to this drug. So, and it, it, like, it's difficult to watch it, but it tells us so much about our own psyche. It tells us what happens when we shut off that intuitive voice inside of us because this series does a really good job because initially almost everybody was hesitant to swallow this magical pill that was promising you the whole world like too good to be true and usually when it's too good to be true it's not true so but slowly 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 whisper 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 with the policies that they were now putting at work in hospitals, for example, they came up with this chart that, you know, and I'm sure for those of you who dealt with pain, when you go to the doctor, they ask you on a scale of zero to 10, where is your pain? And then if you were like five or six, then they had to put you on these medications. And if they didn't, they were threatened to be sued. They were threatened. The doctors were threatened to be fired. They were fired. The ones who refused to prescribe these pills, but then the ones who did prescribe it, they were getting kickbacks. They were being sent um, to these seminars and, but of course, like any lie, because lies only lead to more lies. And we know that because we have lived in this world. We have been around liars in, on a macro and micro level. We've seen people who lie um, in our lives and then we see systems who lie to everyone. And then we see societies, uh, that are based on lies, and then we see all these do's and don'ts. So we know one lie always leads to the next and the next and the next, and at some point, it just all falls apart because it's a house of cards. It's not based on the truth. So at first they said it's not addictive, then the, the patients started showing the signs of addiction, which is you take the pill, and for a couple of days, your pain is fine, and then you feel great. But then let's say you were fine for 10 hours before the drug wore off. Now you're only fine for five hours. But then after the drug wears off, your pain comes back exponentially. And that's what dope sick is. Because then you're like, it's the worst pain you never even had before. And if anyone's interested in the science of pain, Andrew Huberman on his podcast talks about all kinds of narcotics and what happens in our brain. And because uh, he's a neuroscientist. So your brain, then the threshold for pain comes down, but then the pain receptors increase. So before, if you had three bells that were going off before you took this medication or other intoxicants and painkillers, but when they wear off, if they're addictive, instead of three bells, now you have 30 bells. Imagine the intensity of pain. So, so then they came up and they said, oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's true, but it's, it's called breakthrough pain, which means that you need to double your dose. Well, doubling your dose should have been a good telltale of Oh yeah, if a company is trying to double their profit, what are they going to tell you? Double the dose, right? But these super smart people 
who are caring, like people who fall for these things. I was listening to another podcast and they were saying that they're either highly educated or highly caring. And I'm friends with a lot of doctors and nurses and people in the medical community. And they are both of them. They're extremely educated, extremely smart, and extremely caring. This is not the line of work that people pick. I mean, yes, some people pick it because they want to make some quick cash, but it's such a long journey. You know, this is not like I'm going to do a couple of dodgy deals and then I will be rich. No, you have to dedicate 10, sometimes 20 years of your life studying. You're going to miss out on like a lot of things, a lot of events, your youth is going to be behind you when you're done. So you have to have more reason than just, I want to get rich in order to go to these professions. They're highly, highly uh, helpful, caring, sympathetic people. So, but these people were getting tricked and it, and it is the same like playbook as any narcissist, if you've ever dealt with any narcissist, because I believe and I know that these corporations are a like a bigger reflection of the narcissism energy that runs it behind the scene. So what narcissists do, they gaslight you. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not wearing off. It's something else. You are not doing your job because you should be giving them more medication double their dose so then you double their dose and then what happens they come back and now they show severe sign of dope sickness addiction so then they went and found this crazy specialist crazy scientist because for every million amazing scientists that we have we're gonna have one crazy one in every profession you know it's, it's not just in the field of science and this guy came up, of course, they all have a book that he said, yeah, it's called, um, it's called, what was the term that, uh, oh, pseudo, uh, pseudo addiction. And pseudo addiction means that they're under medicated. It means that we didn't address the original pain hard enough and deep enough. So we have to go at it harder. So again, what's the message here? Write more of the medication. Sell more of our product. All in all, all these law enforcers are, or law enforcement people are seeing like a, just almost like a vertical spike in the curve for crime, for parents leaving their children behind for violence, for robbery, like you name it. And and they they could put it exactly in front of the judge and say, the minute this drug was introduced, look at what happened in this city. Look at what happened in this county. Look at what happened in this state. And of course, when you're a corporation, you've been around for a couple of decades, you have so many billions in the bank, you're going to hit it with an army of lawyers. So sure, they were able to stall it so this nightmare went on for 20 years and killed so many people and it's all available for anyone who wants to look into it they were taken to court multiple places multiple cases and uh out of like six or seven billion dollars that they made um profit for just this particular drug they were only given a billion as damages and even then that's like not fully done because they're appealing it because you know once you get into the court system then you know the rest of your life sometimes can be spent on something but people who really believed in the cause and they didn't accept the fact that they didn't have enough resources, that the, the billionaires were stronger than them, that the law was bought and manipulated by this corporation. They basically didn't take no for an answer, but it, you know, those wins never come easy because it causes families to fall apart because someone has to be crazy enough to dedicate their entire life and time and energy into like taking the truth out of this murky water because that's what the narcissists do. Narcissism in 
by either in people or in a corporation. The, the rule number one is murky up the water. Make it like make it so murky that nobody can see through it. And then if you hit people from 10, 20, 30, 100 different angles, then people get confused. And then they always get a little bit of a truth and then they weave it with a million untruths. So then you start questioning, oh, like if so you buy, like you find that one part that's true and then you go, oh, but so then if that is true, then the rest is true, but it's not. That's again, it's their playbook. So then people started to see like these cases that maybe had worked for a short period of time and then they would go, okay, so then what they did, they started shaming the victims. And that's exactly what the narcissists do. They shame the victim. Like, it's your fault that I beat you. It's your fault that I cheated on you. It's your fault that I wasn't home. It's your fault that I stole from you. It's your fault that I'm emotionally unavailable. It's your fault that I am abusive. And that's exactly what they did. They said, oh, it's these people. Because they're loggers, they're minors, they're uneducated, they're low class, whatever they wanted to throw at them. Anything that stuck, they don't know how to handle their medication. It's not us. You're not going to like shoot the messenger. We're just delivered. We want to heal the world. Meanwhile, behind the closed doors, they are conspiring and they are trying to even more and more. And like the bottom line of all these corporations is one thing. It is just one thing, and that is more profit. So going back to Dope Sick, we, like I was just telling you how they are depicting the story and how it happened, because I've been actually following this story for like a couple of years now, because, you know, it's, it's been over the news, but also prior to that, uh, they were writing articles about it. But of course, the this specific uh company corporation they had so much power so they were just putting different spin on it and every time that people were coming up with legitimate reasons as like okay well this is not right like it's it is addictive and it is killing people and it is causing so much chaos in our society and community and what it says on the label is not the actual truth and even their sightings the scientific sightings that they've done they the prosecutors looked into it and it was based on a five sentence op-ed by this famous scientist but it wasn't about that drug it was just about a particular situation where he and i don't want to like give away the whole plot if anybody wants to watch it as entertainment or just even are interested but basically you know it, like it wasn't such a complete uh scientific research it was just you know an observation that this scientist had based on the hospital hospital numbers like people who were you know so many years ago they uh, they were uh, hospitalized and then he looked at these people who were hospitalized and they were giving narcotics and only like one percent or so of these people ended up being addicts but they were at the hospital. They were over, they were only given these pills for the duration of the time they were in hospital, maybe for a day or two or ten days. And they, the doctors and the nurses also knew that these were highly addictive, so they were not giving it, you know, 10, 20, 30, because like with the, you know, case of Oxy, they started with like 10 milligrams, then they made the 20, and then they made the 40, then they made the 80, then they made the 160 milligram pills. And also at part of this show, it shows that the doctors and the nurses, they were falling victim to addiction because they also maybe had us an incident or an accident where they broke something and then they were offered these medications and then they eliminated if somebody says oh i don't want to take this medication then they eliminated the the other medication that were also painkillers and they would say oh this is not good for you because this actually is really bad for your liver so the reason why i talked about this is because in the opening of um the first month i think of the soul form intuitive we talked about narcissism because all of us i'm pretty sure people who watch these shows nine nine out of ten have had their 
interactions and their run-ins with the narcissists. And so when we think of narcissism, we think people, right? But also, no, like narcissism also uh, gets even broader. You have companies that have narcissistic culture. You have corporations that are narcissists. They only think about one thing and one thing and one thing only, and it's their profit and it's their benefit. And everything else is there for them to use and abuse. And that's a narcissist for you. The lack of sympathy, the lack of empathy, the, the, the sheer lack of humanity. So, so the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because it goes back to why Soulful Intuitive even started is because I felt like collectively as humans and on this planet, we need to work on our intuition and our intuition needs to be developed. Now, it needs to be recognized. It needs to be talked about and it needs to be developed because it's like a muscle. The more you use it, the better and stronger it gets. But of course, we live in a world and society where nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about the fact that, oh, we all have a built-in compass inside of us. We all have that voice inside of us that knows. It's our higher self. It's our like uh, it's our connection to the divine. It's it's that all-knowing. It's that all-knowing. It's that wise version of us. And yet, even from childhood, we are trained to turn that voice off to negate that voice and learn it the hard way. Some of us do learn and some of us don't. And then unfortunately, if you turn it off and you didn't learn, then your life will spiral and you're just going to end up in a very painful situation. So, so it happens to the best of us. Like this TV show shows it. These doctors who dedicated their life to become a doctor so they could help people ended up not helping because they were tricked, because they were gaslit, because they had to see the truth in the murky water, which is very difficult. And unfortunately, as human beings, we can only see through the murky water with our intuition, with that divinity, with that voice inside of us that knows. And I don't need to point out to our recent experiences in the past couple of years, you know, like we've had so many events, you know, from things that happen in our world where we were told that for our own safety, we need to take our shoes off at the airport. For our own safety, we need to let people look into our phones and emails. For our own safety, we need to do this. We are going to kill people on the other side of the planet because we want to take our democracy there because because for the good of them, those people, you know, had nothing to do with the fact that they were sitting on a vast amount of oil or gas or minerals or you name it. So the propaganda. So at first they make you doubt yourself. Then you doubt yourself. Then you stop listening to that inner voice inside of you. And then they went. And then every now and then when that inner voice comes out and yells, they come up with another reason as why you need to shut it down, as why you're wrong. Oh, you're wrong. It's not day, it's night. So for majority of people, unfortunately, when they're told over and over and over again that this is not daytime, this is nighttime, then they're going to believe it. They're like, oh, this is not day, this is night. And then for the few who still haven't fallen for that, they feel like they live in this like pseudo reality where day is night and night is day. Everything's upside down and we live through it. We live through it. And, and the only way to combat this, the only way to just not fall for this, whether it's in the form of pharmaceutical companies coming after us, it's in the form of uh, war propaganda, it's all kinds of ways. It's just to listen to that voice inside of us, the intuition. And, and, and watching these movies, these documentaries, these TV shows are the best way to see how it happens. It doesn't happen overnight. It's little by little. It's tiptoe. It tiptoes and tiptoes and tiptoes until one day you wake up and you find yourself in the seat of the people that once you never thought yourself as to be one. And 
and it, it again oldest oldest way it's not necessarily something that was invented or discovered yesterday but it cost lives like all these lack of connection with the divine lack of connection with ourselves lack of connection with our own morality lack of connection with what's right and wrong that we all know we all built in like a two-year-old knows it a four-year-old knows it and and we all know it we just allow the outside voices and the outside noises and the outside forces that are not let's say working for the good to convince us otherwise and then and then we're nothing but an accomplice and then we have to live with that pain and then we're gonna have to take that karma into the future and not just and not just our karma then it becomes a collective karma then it becomes a generational karma then it becomes pain for other people to come so it's so important it's so important to take these anecdotes that we are seeing in the world around us today to separate us and realize that whenever somebody comes and says oh like you know in this in this case in the case of pharmaceutical that oh yeah like they are getting addicted because these people are low class they don't know how to handle narcotics even though you told us that it's not a narcotic it's one percent or less chances of being uh, addicted to it so that's how they separate us. And as for those of us who never really dealt with the pain, who didn't take those pills, we're going to nod our heads and say, yeah, those addicts, you know, until it happens in our own backyard, it happens to our own cousin or friend or mom or dad or brother or sister. And then we will feel very shameful. Then we feel guilty that we didn't really go and talk to others. We didn't connect. So to wrap it up, please, please, please go talk to people who are different than you. Go listen to the stories that are hard to listen to. Go investigate. Be curious. And don't just believe whatever you're being told. Because the ones who, like the powers to be with billions and trillions and with the mouthpieces and the platforms that are so louder and stronger and wiser and, and more equipped with like the psychologists and the, the PR people, they know how to trick us. But we only have one weapon that they don't. And that's, that is our inner voice. So if that inner voice becomes very clear and that inner voice is empowered and that inner voice is enforced and that inner voice is allowed to talk, then they can't lie to us no matter who they are and, and no matter where they are and where they come from and what, they're, what snoke, snake oil they're trying to sell us. Because we know for the same reason why Kids know when the kids, when you walk in the room and a four-year-old is running away from someone, you know, there's something wrong there because a four-year-old or a three-year-old, that compass is active and that's, it actually saves them. It keeps them alive. It tells them so much because they don't have the knowledge of this lifetime. They have knowledge from other lifetime, but they are, they have to act on their intuition and on that inner voice to stay away from energies that aren't good for them and that's how we learn from the little ones but no what we do we tell them that oh no you go kiss that guy you know that guy is your uncle or that guy is your neighbor and maybe you know there's something there that we aren't seeing or we aren't hearing or we aren't sensing because we turned that voice off a long time ago but the kid hasn't well thank you very much for watching i hope that you go and you investigate in all kinds of uh, areas and anywhere where is uncomfortable would be a good place to start and see how this psychological war and how shutting off our own voice and our own wisdom plays out in the real world. And it's real and it's been happening and it's time for us to wake up. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you in the next episode.